We do have that 8 a.m. advisory at 747, so it came mm -hmm. in a bit early this morning. What's yeah. the change that we're seeing with that? Well, as of 8 a.m., we're seeing the max sustained winds have decreased slightly. However, this can be misleading. This Irma could be undergoing an Iowa replacement cycle. The pressure has gone up slightly, but of course, we'll take what we can get at this point, right? I mean, any good news is uh, welcome at this point. However, it is still a major Category 4 hurricane, and it is headed our way, just as uh, you mentioned, Eugene, and, and I think that's a good point. He said, it is not a matter of if, it is a matter of how bad, and of course, there's still some uncertainty as to exactly where the core, the center of Irma will be, as we are are expecting it to take a turn to the north, but when will that happen? And as we take a look at the latest satellite, you can see it is just bearing down on the Bahamas. The Turks and Caicos still dealing with some of the outer rain bands and also Cuba uh, dealing with this historic hurricane, really. As we take a look at the latest advisory, so there you see the max sustained winds went from 155 miles per hour to 150 miles per hour, and the pressure has increased uh, just slightly to 927 millibars, moving west northwest, so that hasn't changed. 16 miles per hour and this is the size of the storm it is expected to move between the central bahamas and the north coast of cuba unfortunately there are very warm waters in this area that could provide fuel for irma to strengthen a bit but right now as we look at the uh, saturday night into sunday time frame taking that turn to the north and right now many of the models showing and this forecast track as well that the center of irma could be making landfall somewhere along the upper keys or southern dade county and we are all all included in that cone and again the tropical storm force winds the hurricane force winds extend well out from the center so we all need to prepare to experience the devastating impacts from Irma and really the entire state as Irma is forecast to continue lifting northward across the spine of Florida as a cat four into central Florida as we head into uh, Sunday, Monday morning, Category 2 could be near Melbourne and then likely slamming parts of the Big Ben and the Panhandle as we head throughout the day on Monday into Tuesday morning, Georgia, and then lifting off to the northwest into Tennessee, possibly as a depression by Wednesday and eventually an area of low pressure, but really the entire southeast facing the threat here from Irma. And in terms of our highest threat for hurricane force winds, that's really all across the southern half of the peninsula. So we are going to see the potential for these destructive winds, hence a hurricane warning is in place for us, for the Bahamas, for the Turks and Caicos, Haiti, Cuba, and we're now seeing hurricane watches have gone up just north of us along the Gulf Coast and the East Coast, and we're going to likely continue to see these watches and warnings going up all across the state of Florida, as well as these storm surge warnings and watches that are already in place. So we are going to be dealing with that hurricane warning, and that means hurricane conditions are anticipated with the next 36 hours. The worst weather is expected tonight, but especially tomorrow, Sunday, and into Monday morning. And threats include extreme winds, life-threatening storm surge. So if you have been evacuated to order, get out, leave, please seek shelter. Uh, flooding, heavy rain, the risk of tornadoes with Irma. And as you're taking this final day to prepare, time is running out, the clock is ticking. Check in on that hurricane supply kit. Top off your gas. Make sure you know where the batteries, the flash lights, the radio is, as well as make sure you put up your shutters if you haven't done already. Board up the windows, secure your boats, bring in all the patio furniture, anything outside, even your trash bin that could become dangerous projectiles with these tropical storm and hurricane force winds. And all final preps should really be completed by tonight. You should be hunkering down and taking your uh, final shelter as we head into early tomorrow morning. One thing I do want to mention to all of you as we're talking about final preparations, make sure you talk Talk to your family about what your plan is if it does get really bad, and it could, all right? Uh, we want to just keep it real here and prepare you for uh, what could be the worst scenario, although we're hoping for the best, but right now the track is pointing Irma directly at us. Where will you go if the winds really start howling and increasing? What is the sturdiest structure in your home? I know for me, when we went through Andrew with my family in Southwest State, we went to the bathroom, we listened toward the radio, we held up the mattress because of the risk of those hurricane force winds and the roof being vulnerable and also the risk of tornadoes. So make that plan with your family now this morning so you all know where you're going to go if the weather really goes downhill in your area, all depending on where that core of Irma lands. So right now, more on the local impacts. We do have meteorologist Dave Warren. Dave.
Yeah, you still have time to make the uh, plan here because uh, we are not expecting the tropical storm force winds to uh, really arrive till overnight tonight and tomorrow morning. Uh, that is wind, which is over 40 miles an hour. So uh, there we are Friday morning. Uh, the storm is actually expanded. It might be going through a little regeneration phase here because winds down a bit, uh, but that certainly could increase. Uh, now between tonight and tomorrow morning, uh, that's when we see the tropical storm force winds work their way in through here and then work their way up uh, the Florida Peninsula. So once that wind starts to pick up. It just goes from there. Tropical storm force over 40 miles an hour, or close to 40 miles an hour. Hurricane force over 74 miles an hour, and then the categories go up from there. A close up view. I'll show you this map here. Uh, this is uh, continually updating, uh, so we might see uh, some this area actually increase as we get a better feel for the storm. But this is the storm surge, and it shows how much water we're expecting on top of the land there. So uh, high tide coming about noon uh, there Sunday, maybe a little afternoon. And that'll be the time we're seeing these strong east winds and the waves. So uh, looking at some the risk of a storm surge increasing the farther south you go. Now we're into Miami-Dade County. And you can see east of uh, Route 1, east 95, uh, seeing easily five to eight feet of storm surge. And that value goes up a bit once you get into Biscayne Bay. Uh, this is south there, uh, work through Biscayne Bay. You see Coral Gables, and then they get into the extreme range where you can see close to 10 feet. Now, this is much of southern Miami-Dade County there, seeing that a high risk of uh, the storm surge, 7 to 10 feet. Biggest hazard there in a hurricane is the storm surge. So definitely all the areas that are being evacuated want to get out of this area and maybe work your way north uh, because this goes all the way around the Florida Peninsula and it does include the Keys. On top of the wind and that actual surge, we get the waves. So waves will really start to pick up uh, once the storm goes south of the Bahamas. It's kind of shielded right now, so waves going up and down the east coast around Jacksonville working north. But once that storm moves south of the Bahamas, then we start to see that wind really, uh, the waves really start to increase. Visible satellite, and it shows a little replacement cycle here. Often you see this happen with these intense storms. The wind will go down just a bit, but then it could end up being just as intense. So uh, the wind's down to 150 miles an hour with that latest advisory. Uh, watch for that to possibly increase again as the storm continues to move west. Hot and humid today with spotty storms. Work around those storms to finish your preparations. Gusty showers developing overnight tonight. We'll get these squalls coming in. A tropical storm force wind develops and the rain squalls will increase. Then you get hurricane force wind late and likely seeing a landfall uh, here Sunday. Very early Sunday moving south to north. A life-threatening surge and those hurricane force winds all day. The waves picking up just a bit. Our temperatures are into the 80s. A few showers out there in the Keys. Of course, much of the area has been evacuated already, uh, closer to Miami-Dade, Broward County, seeing just a few spotty showers likely to develop. Future weather computer shows that we'll have these inland storms today, so finish up your preps. There's not much in the way of rain today, and then you can start getting these squalls. There was one overnight tonight, and we'll start to see a bit more coming in tomorrow. As that storm gets a little closer, you get these squalls coming in. The wind picks up and will continue uh, to increase throughout the day Saturday and again on Sunday. So finish your preps, come up with your plan, finalize it. Uh, you have all day today and possibly very early tomorrow to take care of that.